welcome to episode 9 of the Zines and Water Crochet podcast. Um, I'm Rosina. Hello. How are you? Welcome to Devon. Thank you very much for joining me. It's a nice day. I hope it's a nice day where you are too. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit hot again, um, but I think I'm also going to get cold and I, that might be why I'm a bit hot. It's not actually like mega mega hot out there. Hot enough for me to feel like blur. Anyway, um, hello. Should we talk about crochet? Let's just start, shall we? Um, I'll go on about what I've been up to later, I think, because um, I just want to talk about crochet first. I'm going to I'm going to kick off with finished objects this time round, because I want to. And finished object number one is a mandala. Mandala? Mandala. I found a picture of this on Pinterest and um, it looked so pretty I wanted to make one and I sneakily bought a couple of balls of paint box double knit cotton the other day even though I'm not allowed to buy any more I did um, and so I quickly made up um, the mandala just to test the new yarn I bought it wasn't that I was sort of aching for um, a doily for my table or anything like that. It was just a really sort of quick project to um, test the the double knit cotton that I'd, that I'd never used before. Actually I think I probably have used it before, the baubles at Christmas, but not the colours. And so, yeah, a very super duper quick project that you can make sort of in an hour or two and lovely to have a break from all the other stuff that I was doing just to have a bit of fun with sort of some colour play really the pattern I will put in the notes because I've forgotten who the designer is it's called the Magnolia Mandala I think sorry I've got something in my face it's called the Magnolia Mandala and oh uh, yeah the name of the designer escapes me so I will write it down and um, if you fancy having a go it's um a fun project to do. So that's my first finished object, so a little quick one. My second finished object is um, the for, uh, blah, 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 the project I was going to make for, with the Fildar Flocon, Flocon that I was given by Hobbycraft. Um, they have a specific account on Instagram for knitters and crocheters called Knit Craft HQ um, and the lovely Emily from Hobbycraft emailed a, 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 a sort of a, a gang of us and asked us if we'd be interested in trying some filled our yarn and um, so there's a few of us on Instagram you'll see playing around with this with this yarn I had was it was it last time I was talking about it? Was it and there were like little balls of fluffy bunnies everywhere. Um, it might have been the time of the episode before. It was either episode eight or episode seven that I was talking about it. Oh no, that's not this stuff. I was I can't remember. I didn't count how many balls I was given. It was around eight or ten. I'm not sure, but it's. Um, it's got wool in it and alpaca as well as a bit of acrylic and polyamide. polyamide. Um, it smells nice and sheepy and it's very soft and fluffy. At this time of year I was sort of running, running low on ideas so I had to sort of look ahead and think about winter. And there were a couple of us were talking about what I should make and shall I just go for a cowl or shall I go for a jumper? And um, the cowl won out because there wasn't enough to make a jumper. I kind of looked at it and sort of decided that no, it wouldn't stretch to a jumper. However, the idea remained the same, which I'll, I'll talk about. Um, but I made a count and it's huge. And it's just granny clusters, 
but made into a single arrow che a chevron. So I worked in this direction. Actually, I think it was working in the point that way. And I just made it until it was big enough. And then crochet, um, crocheted the ends together on the final row. I did a crochet as you, you know, join as you go to create the, um, the, the circle, you, you know, the joint, the shape you need for a cowl. And so it's that. Uh, oh, it's so hot, I don't want to wear it. It's proper chunky. And you could wear it like this if you like. A bit like Kylie. Only probably more wintry than Kylie. Um, I'm quite pleased with that. I did get carried away and it was enormous at one stage. And I had to cut out. I had to cut out this section. Because um, it was enormous. Um, there was no way I was going to frog that. Because that would have taken a million years to carefully frog back uh, because of the fluffy nature of it it gets caught and tangled and felted and bleh so you have to just go for it and snip snip um, but it, yeah, it was huge and so I cut two two panels out to make it a, a more more reasonable size cowl um, I will write the pattern down because it's a good one. I quite like it. It's very simple, but I'll write it down and I'll put it on the blog at some point soon, but I haven't done it yet. Um, the other idea I had, instead of a cowl, was a jumper, but what I wanted to do was make it so that the jumper would be, and I, I'm i not best suited for this, but the jumper was going to start like here and you'd have the v-neck and then the chevron would go down to however long I wanted the jumper to be I was going to straighten off the edges with a few more sort of granny clusters either side to stop it pointing I would do an extra bit here and an extra bit here do that both sides do something similar on the sleeves join it all together and then have I don't know just standard bottom to finish it and and some cuffs but I wouldn't I wouldn't have enough yarn for that <coughs> that's cut down the wrong way <coughs> it wouldn't um wouldn't have stretched that far and I wouldn't want to do three quarters of the jumper and then not have enough to do sleeves or what have you so but it has given me the idea to do it in a different yarn maybe one day in the future not now, because um, it's just it's not the right weather to worry about jumpers right now. But um, yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. At some point I will write, write it down, but it's so easy that I reckon you could just sort of, write, it would just sort of be a couple of lines really, you know, chain blah blah, do this, join. We shall see. I'll make, you know, I'll make it so that it's understandable. Um, but the yarn, the yarn is lovely and fluffy. It's easy to work with. Um, just as with any kind of um, fluffy yarn like this, you just don't want to frog it. So you, you kind of, I think, a simple project is actually probably pretty good for it, because you, the simpler the the simpler it is, the um, less likely you are to make mistakes. I've bit myself. I've got a mouth full of ulcers. You don't need to know that, but it's so sore. But I've got one here, and it developed because I bit myself like two weeks ago. And every few days I re-bite it. And it's so painful. Even in the middle of last night, I woke up because I'd bitten myself. I don't know why I keep doing it, but <laughs> it's not fair. Anyway, so that's that. I've got two full balls left, and um, I've got one of most of a ball, or that's probably three quarters of a ball of this one, three quarters of a ball of the cream shade left, and two full of that one. Um, I'm going to check and see if it's okay 
and then maybe next episode I'll do a giveaway um, probably with just the two new balls because I don't think anybody wants my cast offs but if you did let me know um, but I'll, I'll check first and then if they say it's okay I'll do a giveaway with my leftovers my third finished object is one you've seen many times before but now it is it's not a work in progress it's not a mostly finished object it is a finished object and it's the blanket um, because I have now done the proper border it was um, I put uh, the just a row of trebles around and then I did some scallops but it was still it was quite boring so I've just jazzed up the scallops slightly by um, putting a teeny weeny sort of wriggly edge um, just a sort of a ripply wibbly I don't know what the technical term would be for it but I've gone round again over the scallops um, and basically I just sort of um, chained two and then put a single crochet in between each treble on the scallop, chain two and another um, single crochet in the next treble just around and then slip stitch slip stitched in between um, and it seems to have worked out okay I don't know if that's actually a, if I can call that an original design or if it's been done before, don't know um, but I've gone all the way around and this is in the fuchsia purple that Starcraft um, special double it because it was chosen by my friend's daughter that's the color she decided she would like and she we went through sort of we did go through um, sort of various pictures of borders and stuff and she said she would like one like this because it reminded her of waves in the sea um, but it was difficult to pin her down for a specific pattern design because she's seven and seven year olds don't do that do they but anyway, this is now hence, henceforth known as Connie's Blanket. And it is done. So she can have that. It's now ready to hand over. But I'm going to take some pictures first. I, don't, I can't get the whole thing in, can I? Because I noticed that last time when I filmed it, I was literally like, here it is, here it is, here it is. And I didn't actually pause to show you. It's because it's really tricky. I'm going to take pictures of it and then I'll probably um, write a blog post about it at some point soon. No, not like m majorly detailed. I'll, I'll list, I'll take some photographs, list the colours I've used and then and sort of links to methods on how to join and what you know similar pans on for the particular sort of square it is and um, I guess I could probably work out how to write down that, that edging as well um, so that's coming soon but I've no idea when exactly sorry um, but I'll do that but so that's that's my finished objects for this time and as for works in progress well I've got loads of ideas it's just sort of whether or not I can get cracking and make a start on them I've got one work, work in progress um, which I've, I've been itching, itching to do for the longest time but for about two weeks I've been making a massive blanket um, for a commission and I worked on that all last week and I was just Di oh no, I took a break for the mandala. Um, I was dying to do other stuff, which is why I did the mandala. Because um, oh, I'm, I'm not a one project person. I like to have many things on the go. My one work in progress, I started yesterday afternoon. Or yesterday, last night actually. And it's a C2C project. And I'm using Paintbox Aran because I love their, their colour selections. Um, it's so funny because I was loyal to Stylecraft for ages but they just don't have the colours in the Aran 
and I like Aran because um, it works up bigger than double knit and so it makes it feel like you've done loads of work when actually it's the same but because um, I did I did an experiment square in double knit and so you can see the difference well, it's, I mean this one's going to be slightly different but at the moment that kind of gives you an idea of the size difference between double knit and Aaron. And um, for the same amount of effort, the same amount of work, your project is bigger. This is going to be a bag. I drew, I drew out this. And when it's finished, I will fold over the finished, um, finished bit of wool yarn fabric and it will be folded over like that and then I'll stitch down the sides there and there and then I'll line it and I'll fancy putting a magnetic clasp into it and having myself a little bag. Um, it's a fun project, I like having fun projects that don't take too long. Um, it's all very well embarking on big projects, they can be really satisfying and, um, and you're really proud when they're finished and stuff but the satisfaction of having something made within a day or two brilliant love it so that's my work in progress um they're probably I've, I've got a list of other stuff i want to do but i'm just going to take my time and have fun hello you all right marcy's down there um she's taken to sleeping underneath the my my underneath the table in my crochet corner of shame and she slept under there when it was really hot weather and I guess it must have been nice and cool down there but because she'd um, been sleeping down there for such a long time she's obviously made her made it nice and smelly a cat she's left her marceline scent and when we were out one day two weeks ago um, I was literally just I was gone for 20 minutes, I was picking the kids up from school or something, I came back in this front room, stank of cat pee. And that naughty cat from next door had been in, located her favourite spot and sprayed. I was so furious. Especially because it was in my crochet corner of shame. Um, the amount of projects I've got down there that he didn't manage to get was what he did do was spray on a bag that she'd been sort of half sleeping on and it was a bag I picked up from my Nana's house that had been her project bag. Um, as luck would have it, I didn't actually want the bag, I wanted the handles and so it did spur me on to just cut the handles away from the fabric, chuck away the fabric. However, in that bag, um, I have gone off on a massive tangent by the way, I was going to talk about something completely different. Um, in that bag was a load of yarn that I'd picked up from Nana's house. Um, in this pillowcase, because I put it in the pillowcase because I had to wash it because it, was, um, it all stank of cat pee, um, is some four ply yarn that I was going to make um, a shawl out of. I've, I've got no real I idea of what, what kind of shawl it's going to be. I chucked it with a label. I think it's Serdar Country country life or country style or something like that but I bought it for my nana a year ago or so because granddad ruined his favourite jumper because he fell off and the nurse cut it cut it off to sort his arm out and my nana was um, cross because they'd ruined his jumper and so I bought her some yarn to make him a new jumper and it was to replace the same colour and the same kind of yarn of that old jumper but obviously she never got to finish it. These were brand new, the, the, the balls that she hadn't touched. So she was, I mean, she was a good way into the new jumper. But I decided to leave all that. I didn't want to sort of rip, rip out what she'd done. And these were the new ones and they were in that bag and they got sprayed on. So I had to put them in the pillowcase and wash them. And I think they're okay. One of them did smell like cat pee still. But um, it seems to have gone now that it's dry. When I... Hmm, I'm not sure it might be that one. Maybe I'll wash them again. It, the thing is, it's like, it's a 30 degree wash. You can't um, do it at a hot wash because it's, it's proper wool. 
I don't know. Anyway, I quite fancy having a shawl made out of this, or making my, making a shawl, and I want it to be inspired by Nana and Grandad in some way, because this 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 is um, I can't remember which is some sort of it was basically the same blue as his uniform. He was in the navy. I don't know if I've got that I've got that right, but that's why she liked that colour so much, because it reminded reminded her of his uniform or somebody's uniform anyway. I think it's Grandad. Hope so. Um, so I was thinking of like trying to think of some sort of naval theme or sky theme because even though he's in the navy, he was learning how to fly an aeroplane years and years ago. So I mean, it's the, almost the colour of a, a summer's blue sky. So that, that's the sort of thing I'm thinking of. But as for stitches, shaping, I've got no real concrete ideas yet. Anyway. I wasn't meant to talk about that. I, oh, I was talking about works in progress, wasn't I? This week I plan on writing up a pattern for um, a shawl I've already talked about. I'm going to do some swatches and, and weigh some yarn out and stuff like that to see, to make sure I, I get it right for when I'm writing down the pattern. And I mean this one, this shawl. Um, I just want to do a, a sort of a swatch so I can measure um, gauge tension and whatnot and make sure that I know how much each section weighs. I'll do some maths. So yeah. Now that I'm talking about maths, it's reminded me about algorithms and um, Instagram. I've been having real problems with Instagram at the minute. I am basically not seen anywhere. I've um, checked by going on my husband's account and unfollowing the Zines and Roger, um, it? My, well, my account, um, and checking on hashtags that I've used, mostly small ones so I can actually find the pictures I've, I've tagged, and they're not showing up. Um, I also have noticed, when, when last month I was co-hosting the crafting is my therapy hashtag, I noticed that um, other people's hashtags would show up on one day and I would go, oh, I'll, I'll use that one in, in, in the grid I, I make for, for showing everybody's work. And you go back in to go and sort of get a sort of a screen grab or, you know, copy the, copy the picture to put in your grid and it's gone. Um, they've still, the hashtag is still on their original photograph, but it's no longer in the feed. And so, I mean, I don't think it's just me. It's not just my problem. If it's, I mean, this is other people's work not showing in hashtags as well. Now, there's this thing about shadow banning and whatnot, and I don't know how much of that is actually legit. Is it a genuine thing or is it just sort of like a, a, a myth? Some people don't think it's real. I, I have thought it's real. But I think maybe sort of thinking about it, maybe it's just a, it's just the algorithms of Instagram deciding whether or not mathematically your picture is worth seeing for other people, and so they are some computer is picking and choosing which pictures are allowed to be visible on on Instagram, which sucks, and. And I think the shadow ban thing is almost like it's just something where you can put the blame on, something where you can go, it is this this actual thing that Instagram are doing for one reason or, one reason or another. Is it because you're using hashtags that are broken? Is it because you are not following the rules? Maybe you're being spammy. Maybe you are um, acting like a bot. I don't know. To a certain extent, those things I don't I don't want to bother my brain about. It's just like pff, accept it. it. It's not um, black and white. There, if you if you put an image on Instagram, you would hope that the people that follow you see it. You would hope that you know potential new IG friends will see it. But um, 
they may not. You, I don't know. I won't talk about it f um, properly because I, it probably a lot of you probably won't be that interested. However, I'll I'll, I'll put a link to an article I read which kind of covers the basics of all of it. Um, because at first, when I suspected that, um, because basically what happened was, um, I stopped getting followers, I stopped getting likes. I mean, it went down by more than 50% and it's just like, oh, I seem to be, have gotten lost. It's just sort of like, um, it, you kind of feel rejected a little bit and it's stupid because it's just, that's not the case at all. You know, I've met some lovely people on Instagram and they're still there. You know, they, 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 we can still see each other's work, but, um, it would be nice to be able to not feel like you're a massive loser and nobody likes you anymore. Which I know is not the case. Anyway, the best thing I can do is um, I'll put a link in the in the notes and um, if you're interested in knowing more, then read about it. And that talks about being shadow banned, although that's not necessarily an actual thing. Instagram have just got funny maths going on. I hadn't... I don't know. Anyway. So, yeah. Next, what what should I say? Um, I'm not wearing lipstick today <laughs> because when I looked at my giant face um, during the editing process of episode 8, Within seconds, I noticed. I think I started talking like, "Hello, welcome to episode bloody, bloody blah, blah, blah." And I did all that, and then I took a drink, and I was wearing bright red lipstick, and the glass just went whoop and drew two lines of red lipstick up my face. And I spent the entire time talking with lipstick on my teeth and lipstick up here, and I pretty much looked like the Joker. Um, everybody's been really nice about it. Okay, no look lovely it really suits you and this is like no I've drawn on my face it was smeared everywhere um but from the comments I I gathered that nobody else noticed it was just me being sort of extra scrutinizing and being silly I shouldn't have mentioned it at all nobody would have noticed I just I felt I felt daft so no lipstick today mostly mostly nude face so yeah, anyway, that's it from me today, um, yeah, thank you ever so much for joining me and I'll see you next time, um, I've got the summer holidays coming up and so hopefully in a fortnight's time I'll be able to do another, I'll be able to do episode 10 and then after that I'm not sure what's going to happen. I'll try and squeeze in a few episodes over the summer holidays but I don't know when they'll be, it won't be sort of as regular and um, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll try my hardest because I really enjoy these. I hope you do as well. Um, thanks ever so much for joining me, and I'll see you. I'll see you. See you when I see you. <laughs> All right then. Cheerio. Bye.